Well, Jay. Yeah. You ready? Of course. Born ready. Ready for anything. Ready for the day. Ready for the mountains. Ready for midges. Day six of the Cape Wrath Ultra. It's about six o'clock in the morning. Uh, we're packing our bags. Uh, there are still seven of us in this tent. Uh, so those of us who uh, are not on the full still are all still here doing the Explorer. There's a packed tent um, and there's a lot of stuff to pack up in the mornings. This is all my stuff here. Organised as usual. Organised. It's, organized it's beautiful. That is organised for me, actually. It's organised. That's my organisation. James is organised. Steve is less organised. He's still having breakfast. So we're ready to go on another long day. This is the, this is actually the longest day in terms of distance, but it shouldn't take us as long as day three did. You need some more of these. It shouldn't take us as long as day three. Hello. This is this is putting on trainers that have been out in the rain all night. You should put them in the drawing room. You, there's, have you not noticed a sign that says, please don't put your trainers in the drawing room? Oh, is there a sign that says that? <laughs> is there really? Yeah. I'm never up early enough to see the seven o'clock lot go off, but today I am. Because it's a long day today, so they are leaving in five seconds. So that is the first group off and the rest of us are going to trudge through momentarily. Just got to do bag check, get my dry bag in the van and away we go. So today at Kit Check they wanted to see my compass, my map and my whistle. My whistle is attached, uh, it's built into the, the backpack. Uh, compass and map, I have to admit, I haven't used at all on the run yet. Uh, but it is there if I need it should my GPX watch fail completely. 66 kilometers today to do, 66. It, what does it say there? Don't tell me it says, oh Jesus. 73, not 66, 73. Thanks for that Steve, brilliant. Oh who cares, it's just, it's just another run, it's fine. Okay, time to start. Hi, Stephen. Yes, I'm Have good. A good one. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. You doing okay? I'm doing all right. Yeah, let's get this. Let's get this one done today. Yeah, get it done. Get and it then. Done. So long, one of us. You got it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. See ya. Cheers. Okay, seven oh nine, and uh, we are away on day six of the Cape Wrath Ultra. So got a banana that I'm just going to munch on. This is going to be a long, long day. Um, it's just a case of getting it done. <clears throat> so I'm going to have a banana. Uh, we've got a big climb to start and then it's forest trail for a long way, apparently, I think. I set off from Inverbrew bound for Inchnadamf and Loch Asint. Despite being the longest day of the Cape Wrath Ultra, when comparing finish times from previous years, day six covers more mileage than the other long day, day three, but it's usually completed in a faster time, helped by more runnable terrain and less overall elevation. Just come up on uh, James, campmate James, or Trenchfoot King, Trench, Trench King James. <laughs> Not tre it would have been a bad idea to call it Trenchfoot, wouldn't it? It would be, wouldn't it? Having a good day? Well, early days, isn't it? Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be a, it's going to be a long one. Longest of the day, isn't it, though? So, yeah. longest of the week. Yeah. So, in a video proudly sponsored by Trench, why would somebody, why should somebody buy your Trench cream, the my trench, friend? My, my cream, because it basically saves your feet when they're getting wet. Used used for all of these events and highly recommended by the medical team on a, a rare events and soon to be in the shop soon to be supporting a rare events yeah yeah 
um, as their go-to foot cream along with their blister packs. Yeah. So uh, if that isn't a recommendation, Array events themselves are wanting to stock trench cream. So uh, go and try it out. Give, uh, give James a shout and get some. Advert over. Let's get back on. Let's get back on with this run. Get back running. <laughs> First climb of the day. Well, there are only two, one at the beginning and one at the end, but they're big, long, steep climbs. And then it's relatively flat. <music> 10 kilometers in, we've reached the top of the first climb. We're just traversing over the top now. Very boggy, marshy, wet tried to keep my feet dry as long as possible. I'm not going quick, but uh, it's not easy to go quick. Just hoping that when we get down to the bottom, it'll be easier running for a few K. One hour, 48 minutes in now. I'd really like to get done by six or seven o'clock tonight, but who knows, probably be more like 10. And this is what we came here for. Things like that, magnificent. Absolutely beautiful. Somebody taking a tumble just in front of us, which shows me. <laughs> which shows that you've got to be careful. Just, you know, one wrong move and your ankle goes over and your race is finished, you know? Uh, just have to watch where you're putting your footing. And then if you don't watch, you just have to hope that you're lucky. The early miles were similar to some of the other days, with a big, steep climb out of camp and then a boggy traverse through the heather at the top. We were now entering Glenduckery in Russia. I did start wondering when the fire track was going to arrive as I trudged through the mud, trying to avoid slipping into the river. It was tough going for a time, but eventually it led to this lovely waterfall. Worth it just for that, I think. Worth it just for that. Absolutely stunning. 14 kilometers in. Very close to the edge. Do not want to fall down here. Some of the lead guys have just raced through past us here. How they don't trip and fall is beyond me because they're going so quickly on routes that I would just have to so take so steadily. Twenty kilometers in, three hours forty-five. One of the bothies there, if you're doing the Cape Wrath Ultra on your own, unsupported, you can stay in those bothies. Beautiful lock behind us as well. Um, I'm finding it a little more difficult to run today. Um, possibly I didn't go in the water yesterday to recover my legs. That might have had an effect. Very poor sleep last night. Didn't get a good night's sleep. So all that might have had an effect and my legs are not playing today really. But I'll clock out some kilometers and we'll see where we get to. I need to be at the checkpoint, checkpoint two. We just passed checkpoint one, which was 11 o'clock cut off and we got there about 20 to 11. Um, so the next cut off is 2.30 and it's in 17 kilometers. So we've got time, we've got two, two and a half hours to get there, so should be okay. With runnable ground now underfoot, I started to make some headway towards checkpoint two and the Oikel Bridge. With five days of running, hiking and climbing in my legs, it was a wonder I could move at all. It is remarkable what punishment the body and mind can endure. 
Whether it's luck, genetics, training or mind over matter, sometimes we find something within ourselves to keep moving forward, whether that's literally or metaphorically. Just ticked over 27 kilometres, 4 hours, 45 minutes. So that means we just have 10k to go to the halfway checkpoint. 37k is halfway. There is a cut off there at 2.30. It's now 10 past 12, so I've got two hours, 20 minutes to get 10K. So that is totally doable, unless something awful happens. Really should be able to do that. And then it's just a case of banging out the last 30 yard K, 35K, I think. Hips are really sore today. I can run, it's just, it's just aching. It's not, it's not comfortable like it was yesterday. Anyway, it's a lot of fire track today. A lot of hard pack underfoot now that we've got out of the bogs. This, this is what happened, okay? This is what happened. It's not what happened. I saw Jay up ahead, but I really needed a wee. So I thought, it's okay, I won't catch him up just yet. I'll stop and have a wee, and then I'll catch him up. I stop, and five seconds after me, Jay stops as well, and we both have a wee. I mean, and he thinks he's t he's telling you now that that he stopped first and that I just copied him. You just didn't want to run with me because you were feeling insecure and a bit inferior. It's taken you hours to catch me today. You buggered <laughs> your hips. Oh, oh, hey! At least I've caught you on Wait, what hey, day day three? I didn't catch you at all, did I? You've only got another twenty miles. Anything could happen. Only twenty miles to go today. Oh, jeez! <laughs> another thirty tomorrow. Nearly five and a half hours in. Well, for me, I mean, he's, he's probably in about six hours because he started hours before I did. Hours before. I believe I was on time, actually. <laughs> As opposed to you having your double mocha latte. Yeah, just sitting around for a bit. We've got to checkpoint two, about uh, 3K before I thought we would. So that's good, isn't it? Sorry. This, this, <laughs> this is checkpoint two. Well, that is actually... Oh, that's... Oh, right, yeah. okay. That's yeah, checkpoint. Right. You no, oh, I know. I better, you better not... To go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, there isn't a shop here, is there? No, you're right. There isn't. Bloody hell. <laughs> I want a latte. Where am I going? Up there. Up there. Yeah. All right. Cheers, guys. 13.03. So three minutes past one. So a lot earlier than we expected at checkpoint two. With about, well, probably about 20 miles to go then. So that is a, that is a bonus, isn't it? Absolute bonus. Need to fill up the water at some point. The bridge at Oikel has served as a crossing point between Rosshire and Sutherland since the mid 19th century. Just after crossing, I was interviewed by Charlotte from the Urea Events media team. You can watch that video by clicking the link in the top right corner. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that now. That would be much appreciated. Doing all right? Yeah, yeah. That uh, aid station came along. Aid station? What am I talking about? Checkpoint. That checkpoint came along nice and early, didn't it? hours 50 minutes and we've just hit a marathon so that's not bad for a marathon after uh, five solid days of running how's it going that was not Kipchoge was it <laughs> <laughs> not Kipchoge pace no no so apparently we've got another 5k on this uh, fire track here 
and then uh, it starts to get a bit more gnarly again and we've got one final climb to the finish in about 22k 23k something like that isn't it and then one more day one more big day Come on. let me get a run along the beach yeah into a lighthouse i might even go swimming in that sea i've just been informed that people pay a lot of money apparently to come and fish for salmon in this river one of the best salmon fishing rivers in the country so i'm led to believe so that's this river here which i am desperate to jump in because it's got quite warm now 40 uh, 45 k in so 19 20 19 k to go that's a bit squidgy I'd run along the banks of the Oikel River for long enough now. It was very warm and in order to stop my skin turning salmon pink in the sun, I decided to join the salmon in the water. Apparently, the Oikel is also famous for its brown trout. I'll leave you to decide in the comments below which I most resemble. I can only apologise for contaminating this exceptional river with five days of ultra running grime. Now that's what you call going in a river. I hope we don't fail to see the beauty of being free. Don't forget what you love the most. I just want to keep you close. So we have to give it one more try before the idiots are taking off. Someone has been along here and mowed the grass on the trail. This is absolutely stunning here. Just gorgeous. There's so much more than we've been told. Way beyond what we can hold. So keep your eyes open for the things that we Now that the idiots are taking over They're caught up in the race of wanting more And we can tell one from the other No one can tell you what they're running from No one knows anymore What's it for? What a stunning valley we are in. 54 kilometers in with 11 kilometers to go. So we are really not too far away now. Up this hill, we're climbing a hill now from the valley floor up and then down to the lock and to the camp. And the climb's about 500 meters, I think something like that I'm gonna get my poles out in a minute but I can feel the end now I can feel we are getting there and uh, I've had a really good day I'm, I'm tired now I mean I'm really shattered now and I just love to get this climb over and done with and get down into camp but overall it's been absolutely superb today just beautiful brilliant and beautiful and I felt mainly really good and the weather's been fine, so it started off quite cool this morning. Got quite warm this afternoon. I went for a swim. So, well, a dunk, not a swim. Look at that. I mean, the GoPro just probably doesn't do it justice. But that's amazing. The light on it, like the light coming through from the clouds, especially that section there.
hilarious thing about the Cape Wrath Trail. You think you're following the right route, you think you're on the right path, and then you look at your GPX and suddenly you're 200 meters off course on the wrong path. So now I'm just coming down through the brush, um, the no path just to get onto the trail again. <laughs> Two guys up there as well who've obviously gone the wrong way, they're trying to find their way back onto the path. So nice, so quiet, there's no wind. Just in the middle of this valley with the river in the middle and mountains on either side. And we're making our way across that way. So I think we're gonna climb through a pass there. So the final climb is done. Hardly any path to see. It was a really tough climb um, through the heather. I feel like I've got bitten all over again by midges. But we're just making our way through this pass now and then we'll drop down. We've got 6K to go to camp and I'm so looking forward to my dinner. <laughs> but I've had a great day. The final descent into camp was another one I had run during my volunteering stint last year, so I knew the last three kilometres was easy running down the hill on good trails. I knew there was a shop at the end where I could buy provisions and I knew I was about to tick off another amazing day in the Scottish Highlands. Can't beat it, can you? Fantastic. This is what you want. Strong finish down the hill. And we're in on day six. 65 kilometers done. Come on! Well Love that. Well done, buddy. How was that? Hi James. Have you stopped your watch? Uh, I haven't, but I, I've been having problems with my watch, so I need to do something with it. Super day. You look good coming down there. Oh, stop. Fantastic. Right here. Crack it. Well done. Crack it. You're Brilliant, Pat. Thank you very much. Now, Thank you. Before you go away, we have some things that we need to do. Oh, right, okay, yes. Okay, yes, it's it. Uh, I'm going to Back home. 10.14. There's my bag, number 30. Take my shoes off. So that, that information was just, uh, don't walk around barefoot anywhere and wash your hands because they have got, we have got norovirus in camp. So it's a little bit concerning, but we only have two days to go. As the sun set over Locasint on day six, I took a quiet moment to think about my family and the paradox that with each step further away from them, we are one step closer to being reunited. Coming up in episode eight of the Cape Wrath Ultra. In the spirit of uh, keeping it real, I'm feeling a bit low. I can't believe I've missed the highest waterfall in the UK. But I don't want to go at this speed. I want to feel like I'm making progress. It's very hot now and this is becoming a real slog. So I think I am now getting an injury on my right foot. Because it's this stuff that's it's killing me, this most depressing coast path. Just awful. Broken today. Broken today. <laughs>